Have you seen this before? Take an input image and turn it into this and this and this. Yes, controllers have been available for quite some time, but there are some new players on the market. And I'm going to give you a workflow to use Flux Tools Depth and Canning. So these are the official Black Forest Labs depth and canning models for Flux. I'm going to show you a special kind of way to use it that I think, well, very cool because, well, you know, it's my workflow. So, oh, and do you know what the leading cause of dry skin is? Towels. So today I'm going to show you this and it's going to be different from all of the other workflows that you've been seeing because most of them are actually using the Flux Depth and Canny Loras. And why are they doing that? Well, that's because you can, uh, well, you can set a, a strength a value slider of how much you want to control it, control it. So here's the workflow that I used to make uh, part of this thumbnail. So I have this input image here, this woman holding up her hand, and the output is this uh, wizard kind of you shall not pass Gandalf lookalike that you can see here. Now I've hidden all of the spaghetti right now. So usually it looks like this. There's a little uh, button down in the right corner behind my face that says toggle link visibility. So I'm just holding that off. But what happens here is that you're loading an image, you are setting your models, and we are gonna need to download these if you don't have them. They're gonna be in the notes here. They're also gonna be in the free guide that I'm linking in the description. So this is the guide. So the models are in these links here. So you're going to have the dev FP8, the canny and the depth. You place them in Conf UI models, diffusion models. Then you have the text encoders to so the clips. So that you place those in the models clip folder. And then the VAE, so safe tensor that goes into models VAE. And all those models are what we're using here. Oh, everything's up here. I just wanted to remind you that if you're getting uh, missing custom nodes, go into your manager, install missing custom nodes, and then all of the missing nodes will be here. You select them, and then will be an install button down here. Just remember to restart your comfy after that and refresh your browser. And as you can notice here, we're actually loading two diffusion models. So we're loading one here and one here. And that's because we're going to be swapping between them. And if you're a smart uh, guy or gal out there now, you might be saying, hey, but that's just gonna load my RAM even more. Well, yes, a little bit. But to counter that, we are using the FP8 models. So th those are uh, 11 gigabytes a pop. So, uh, well, I hope you have at least some system RAM. You can also disable this, the second one, and only run the depth or the can here. That will substantially lower the required memory but just remember if you do that you actually need to uh, set this slider here to 20 or whatever your maximum steps is and that is because we are first running the depth model and then we are swapping to the dev model and that goes well the values to set that is over here but it actually happens down here so what's going on is that we are loading our image. It reads that image size. Currently, you can see here that whatever image you're loading, you're getting that size here. And then it recalculates that size. So if you input like a 48,000 by 11 million pixel image, it's gonna resize that to well, actually an SDXL recommended size, but that is the same as a flux recommended size. So it will be in the 1024 by 1024 size. But it doesn't matter like if it's a vertical or horizontal or a square, it's gonna do that for you. So it's not gonna change the aspect ratio of your image. And as you can see, this is a vertical image and our end result is also a vertical image in the same aspect ratio. Creativity often faces limits, whether it's time, budget, or resources. This video's partner, LTX Studio, is here to change that. This all-in-one platform empowers creators and advertisers to bring creative ideas to life through a suite of professional features using 
AI. With the integration of LTX Video inside of LTX Studio, LTX Studio offers the fastest video generation currently available on the market. It's actually faster generation than the play speed, which is pretty amazing. From brainstorming and concept development to storyboarding and pitch deck creation, LTX Studio is built for entire pre-production process. Imagine using face motion capture to make characters' faces and gestures naturally. Or syncing lip movements seamlessly with character dialogue for authentic performances. These features are perfect for ads, short films, or even high-concept TV projects. And it doesn't stop there. Here's an example of what it can do. Look at this. So this is something that you can create inside of the studio. LTX Studio enhances your workflow with intuitive tools that allow you to visualize your creative vision in real time. With scene parameters, you can adjust lighting and weather across an entire scene, and thanks to team collaboration, multiple users can edit a project in real time. Ideal for creative teams working on commercials or interactive media. Plus, LTX Studio offers one hour of free computing time, enough to complete a full project. The platform supports everything from imaginative concept development to storyboard perfection, offering smooth workflows and top tier outputs. Why dream it when you can design it? Get started with LTX Studio now, link in the description. And if you prefer to run LTX in Comfy, try out their new LTX video model. It then runs the image into either a canny or a depth map. And in the preview here, we can see that we are now running the depth map. The image then goes into the first K sampler. We're just using flux default values. We're using Euler at uh, 20 steps at CFG1. And in the second, we're also using basically the same settings. But how do you know when it changes from the first? So this is the flux depth and this is the regular flux dev. How do you know when it changes? You can actually set that up here. So here, after we've written our beautiful prompt, we set our control net strength. So this is the maximum steps that our generation will run, currently set at 20 steps. So this is the slider where generation changes or how strong you want the control net to be. Now I'm using the word control net a little loosely here because officially this is not, these are not control net models because they are integrated into the flux base model. And that's where, why we're also making this swap. So here we're running the depth model for 10 steps. So half of the generation, and then we're finishing up with the base model. And these can be set between one and 20. Well, and if you change this, so you set this to 30, for example, then your max here will be 30. Well, I guess like in theory, you could set this to 40, but it's not going to change anything. It's just going to run to 30 anyway. Let's set this back to 10 and 20. So for half of the generation, it runs the depth and then finishes with the depth. You can actually see the preview here. So these are the first 10 steps. So it takes the values from the, the image and renders from that. But then it uses this without a control net to render the last 10 steps and then we get this. And you might be asking, well, Seb, this sounds mighty complicated. Why are you doing this? Why not just run only the depth or the dev model? Well, if you do, you will get images that most of the time only resemble this. So your control and strength would be 100% all of the time. And that's not really what we want, right? We want to be able to adjust our control and strength. And this is why we do that. So we are adjusting the control and strength by changing these sliders. And let me show you how to do that. I'm also going to show you how to swap between canny and depth. I have this is switch here. So false, it will be on depth and canny, it will be true. We remember to, if you change this, you also have to change the model. So we're now selecting canny FP8 and let's load something else. Let's take this image here. For example, we have this Viking woman and she's looking very ferocious. Now let's say that we want um, woman in a tropical island paradise. Let's leave it at that. Now, if we set this to 20, so now we're running the canny model for 100% of the generation. Let's just quickly render this 
and see what we get, right? So first we can see the canny model. So this is what the control net sees. So this is what we're going to try to replicate. And now the left K sampler is going to be the only K sampler being used for this purpose. And our finished image here, well, kind of closely resembling the original image. We're getting some new hair and the, the braids here turned into like earrings of some sort, but that's, that's all right. If you look closely at the canny hair, I think it's hard to say that they're actually braids in the hair, right? Now, if you don't want this, you want a woman looking, well, sort of like this in this pose, but not as close as what we got here. Well, what you can do is you can lower this. So you set this to, let's say this to three, for example. So we're going to run this for three steps, and then we're swapping to the base model. That means that our first generation will just get this, and then we will have 17 steps working from this without any control net. That will give the model a lot of room for creativity. And as you can see, we see that in the result as well. And all our generations are completely random now. So this is nothing, no pre-prepared seeds or anything. So as you can see, we did get a woman that is fairly in the similar kind of position, but something completely different. So this is how you can control how much strength you're using with these powerful flux models. If you're using the flux Loras, quality is most of the time lacking in my opinion. Let's increase this a little, let's set this to, let's set this to seven, for example. And we will now see that it will more closely resemble our input image while still retaining that input. And as you see, this is what we have. And then we're running 13 steps from this and we are getting this. So now we're more closely resembling the left input there, right? So her shield here and the braids turned into kind of the earrings again and some sort of a wheel here, wheel on a boat maybe. This is how you can fine tune your images. And if you try this with a different kind of image. Let's see what we have. We have, we take this one. So we have this portrait of a man here. And let's change this into science fiction android robot close up portrait. Let's, let's leave this to seven for now. Most of the time, you're probably going to want to be around three to 10. And that will give you uh, pretty good results. But if you really want to get close to your input image, you're going to need to uh, increase those values a lot. And we can see here is what Kenny sees. And here is our progress. So these are the first seven steps. And from that, we're getting this kind of an output. And looking at what we had here previously, we're fairly close to what was there, right? Let's turn this into more of a robot, biomechanical robot. And let's see, let's maybe lower this a little bit, set this to five, let's see if we can get some cool new creative parts in there. We might want to lower that even further. And one way to do that, or rather how to give it more creative freedom, is how we looked at the original, uh, what well, we started the, the video where we saw the thumbnail image. And for that, I used depth. And here you can see we're getting more creative freedom. But let's actually, let's change this, the depth model up here. We have a depth and we're swapping this. So that we're enabling the depth switch. Um, let's try this again. Now you can see this will be more loosely resembling the image. So whatever happens inside of this will now have more creative freedom. And you can clearly see that in the preview here that we're getting more robot parts, which wasn't the case when we had the canny lines. So I think this is a way to get much more creative freedom into your images while still retaining what we had in our input, right? So all of this you will be able to download from the guide here. This is a free guide. Just get to this link. There's a text guide here that's goes into most of the stuff that we talked about today. The workflow can be downloaded down here from this link. Just drag and drop it into your comfy. And if you have any more questions or comments, please leave them in, well, the comments below. But I think this is a fairly cool way on how you can use the new Flux Tools official control net 
models. They prefer not calling them control nets, but eh, I'll do that anyway. So the usual way to do this is without loading in this second model and this second case sampler. I hope you learned something today. Check out my other videos and guides. There are lots both on my YouTube and on my Patreon. I got free content on Patreon. I got paid content content on Patreon to suit, well, most needs. As always, have a good one. See ya.